Welcome to another video from SQL Maestros. Today we are going to talk about SQL Server monitoring and specifically we are going to look into CPU monitoring. Now in modern hardware terminology we use the term logical processors which actually means we are talking about CPU. And in SQL Server terminology we again use another word called schedulers. Why do we use the word scheduler? Simply because when you send your request, your query to SQL Server at minimum, it needs one thread to execute your query. Thread is the lowest unit of execution and a thread is scheduled on a scheduler and that's why we use the term scheduler. So whether you say logical processor or scheduler kind of mean the same thing. Now what happens internally is when the request is sent to SQL Server, your query might run on a single thread which is the serial execution or your workload may be parallelized in which case it may need multiple threads to execute. But that is a different discussion. Coming back to the thread and the execution, now going by the basics of computer science, a scheduler, a logical processor can execute only one thread at a time. Now given that, of course, a database software like SQL Server is capable of kind of running hundreds and even thousands of threads simultaneously. That's the kind of feeling we get. But in reality, there is only one thread being executed on one scheduler or one logical processor. So let's assume that your hardware has like 64 logical processors. It can only execute 64 threads in parallel, one thread on each scheduler. But now in your business, you know that there are hundreds and thousands of users connected at any given point in time and they're firing all sorts of requests in an OLTP environment. So actually there are really in reality hundreds and thousands of threads seeming to be running in parallel. How does that happen? Well, that is what we call as cooperative multitasking. In reality, there's only one thread running at a time and each thread gets a time slice of the CPU, which is four milliseconds. Yes, it is just four milliseconds. 1000 milliseconds make a second and we are talking about four milliseconds. This is also what we call as the quantum. Now a thread goes to the CPU, runs for four milliseconds and then backs off and gives the turn to another thread that is waiting in the queue. And here we use this term that we call as the CPU queue. And today's demo is actually about CPU queue. So think about your hardware, whether you have 16 logical processors or 32 or 64 or 128 or even a highly configured machine like 512 logical processors. We sometimes use the word cores also, but then I'm kind of sticking to logical processors. And if you have those many, think about Think about a queue being formed in front of each scheduler. And just to kind of visualize, visualize this very simply, let's say your hardware has 16 or your VM has, has 16 logical processors. Now visualize that there is a queue in front of each scheduler or in front of each CPU. And there's only one thread running for four millisecond. It backs off and goes and, queue, uh, and lines up, puts its position back in the queue and the next thread which is waiting in the queue get, gets its turn. And this is what we call as the cooperative multitasking. Each thread gets a four millisecond time slice and then uh, backs off again and the next thread in the queue gets its turn, so on and so forth. So when it comes to, and, and this is how the scene is for all the schedulers in uh, on that hardware. So each CPU has its own queue where one thread is running while all others are waiting in the queue. And in this queue, we use the term as uh, first in first out. That's the methodology, right? Whoever comes in first, uh, goes to the CPU first, does its job and um, moves out again. And of course, four milliseconds might not be enough for the thread to complete its execution. And that is where it has to go back and line up again at the end of the queue. And that just keeps happening till the time the thread is done with its job. Now, from a monitoring perspective, you got to look at this queue. So while one thread is running, and the status of that thread is running, others are in the status called as runnable. They're ready to run. It's just that they're waiting uh, for their turn on the CPU. So they are in runnable state. 
and when it comes to monitoring you got to look into this queue how big or how long this queue is how many tasks are currently in runnable state so sql server monitoring is a huge topic and of course cpu core uh, scheduler monitoring again is pretty vast i've just put up a small demo just to kind of show this queue to you and with this demo you'll get a lot of ideas on how you can monitor better so let's jump into the demo now first thing when i said scheduler so here is a dynamic management view called sysdmos schedulers and we use the status as uh, visible online i'm putting a filter on this because there are hidden schedulers also the purpose of hidden schedulers is to ensure that some background threads in sql server like checkpoint lazy writer resource monitor they really don't have to kind of uh, uh, be stressed out if they do not get their cpu time slice so hidden schedulers are more like reserved cpu time for those background threads okay we are using two other attributes like CPU ID and the runnable task count. So let's go and execute this and get this limited information from dim OS schedulers. There are a lot of other attributes that you can try out and see what they contain. Now, what you see is on my VM right now, I have eight schedulers or eight logical processors. Um, the IDs are from zero to seven. And currently it's a very quiescent SQL server. There's no workload running and the runnable task count for all of them is zero. A very happy situation for the DBAs. Now, if you go to the task manager here and you can look at CPU and there's very minimal usage of all the CPUs across as you can see. And what I will do now is just to show you this queue and there are other ways also how you can monitor and go back and run the other query on the top. Now I'm going to stress SQL Server. I'll go to my folder. I'm using RML utilities to fire 100 users. We're going to run random workloads and then we are going to monitor this. Now back up again, just to show you that right now there are no workloads running and you can see the current queue for each of these uh, CPUs is just um, kind of uh, uh, zero. I mean, no one really is waiting in the queue. You know, this queue is like our real life uh, metaphor when when let's say you we we encounter queues in our daily life right waiting for the cab and we are in a queue uh, waiting in front of the elevator to get inside the elevator in a busy uh, building office building or the best is waiting uh, for coffee in the pantry in the cafeteria and you are in front uh, you're in a queue and there are people uh, in front of you who are waiting for their turn and the coffee vending machine is vending coffee and takes about 30 seconds to a minute and then the next person in the queue get its turn. It's something very similar. The scheduler in SQL Server does not take 30 seconds or one minute. The, the time slice for the thread is only four milliseconds, yeah? So let's go and look into this queue now. So I'm going to run this uh, stress SQL Server with 100 users, double click on this. It's running. Let's go back here and now run this again. And you can see that there you go for each CPU. Now look at the runnable task count, like for CPU zero, it's 11 tasks that are waiting. They're in runnable state, ready to run for two. Again, it's 11 and, and that's how the distribution is. Will not be always very even, but you can still see that workloads are being kind of distributed more or less equally. Now, if you look at the numbers again, I've just refreshed 12, 10, 13, 11, 13. These are the number of threads, tasks that are currently in the queue. So there's only one that is running, remaining are waiting. If you jump over to the task manager, you can see all the eight processors, schedulers, cores, whatever, they're all being used, like utilized 100%. Look at the CPU utilization here right now. It's sitting at 100%. Now, this is one way of looking at it. And there's another way of looking at things. So I've joined tasks, requests, and sessions, uh, some of these uh, DMVs to get more meaningful output and when it when i say meaningful it depends on what kind of information you want so you could join the relevant dmvs and filter out the attributes that you want now for each scheduler i can look at the different states of the task so i can see scheduler zero runnable there are four tasks scheduler id one runnable five and one is running for scheduler id two which is my third cpu there are 10 tasks that are in runnable state um, and likewise, if I keep 
scrolling down, you can see runnable, running, runnable, running. I mean, depending on when it actually got that information, you can see runnable and running. There's one thing you will notice for each scheduler, whenever I see running, it's always one. See, for seven, running, it's always one. And that's the point I was trying to make. One thread at a time. But because this time slicing is so fast, four milliseconds, and it just happens so quickly, you get that feeling that all your hundreds and thousands of threads are running in parallel. But in reality, as you can see, uh, running is always one thread at a time. So now when you look at this uh, scheduler um, and, and the queue and how many tasks are currently in the runnable state, let me go and stop the workload now. So let's just go and execute this and stop the workload for the moment. Yes, we are stopping this. Let's terminate this. Oops. Okay. So when you look at and when you're monitoring the schedulers and all these runnable tasks, I mean, a few things will come to your mind. When you see a, a long queue, a lot of tasks in runnable state, what this could mean? Well, a very simple idea could be that your hardware needs to be powered with more CPU because you constantly have a huge queue all the time and CPU is choking at 100% all the time or even above 99% all the time. This could mean that your hardware is underpowered. Maybe you need to add more CPUs. It's just that there's so many threads and so many users connected and running workloads simultaneously. That's an easy conclusion to make. The second could be, why don't you go and look into all the workloads and try to optimize CPU intensive workloads. There could be long running workloads that are eating up a lot of CPU uh, time and there may be long running uh, threads. You may want to go and optimize them. That's a different discussion and different um, uh, topic altogether on how you can optimize your T-SQL queries, make them short, make them more CPU uh, uh, performance intensive that way. That's another thing to go and uh, look into. So how you optimize further, um, add more CPUs or look at optimizing your T-SQL queries or workloads, I mean, totally different discussion. But the idea of this demo was to just kind of show you CPU monitoring and monitoring the queues, the runnable tasks for each queue. Hope this opens up uh, something, starts ringing some bell on how you can monitor better. And mind you, there are lovely different ways of monitoring, right? Perfmon counters, more dynamic management views, more tools, but I wanted to show you these raw DMVs. And uh, there's, um, uh, when, uh, the one last thing, when I actually wanted to show you this uh, scheduler DMV, and um, maybe once you look at the attributes, you may get more ideas on how you can write more meaningful queries to get better information. So if you look at, uh, these schedulers here, CPU ID from zero to seven, and there you go current task count, runnable task count, current worker task count, active workers, right? And work queue count. So there's all of these things available here. And I played around with runnable task count. This is what I wanted to show you. And this is what you should keep an eye on as to how long your queue is. Well, end of the demo. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sqlmaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there, video courses, master classes, lab kits, ebooks, blogs, hands-on labs, and a lot more. Follow us on Twitter, at the rate SQL Maestros, and myself, A underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.